Good morning. Welcome to worship. This is the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. We're so glad that you've joined us today. If you're visiting with us, we invite you to fill out one of the green cards in your pews and to um, put them in the offering plate or to leave them at the door so we can know who you are and help us to get to know you. We have coffee hour following the service in the social rooms, which is right out this door. We are working on the sound. To our people that are worshiping with us online at home, we know that we've had problems with the sound going in and out and not being consistent. Today we have a new microphone. John McGuire is going to maybe be up here fiddling around with it to make sure that it, it's being able to be heard in the sanctuary and online. So thank you, John. There are offering envelopes for anybody who would like them. The envelopes are a little different from last year. They are not dated. They are um, they're listed on them what the day of the month is, so the first Sunday in November instead of November 6th, so that if you don't use all of your offering envelopes, if you use once a month or whatever, you can then use the same box of envelopes for multiple years. So we're trying to be green and also to allow for people to have offering envelopes if you like. So they're right in the haze room, right through this door. If you pick up a box, just please write your name on it with which number box you've taken. One week from today, Connie Fredericks Malone will be giving a benefit concert for the called to care refugee resettlement of a Ukrainian refugee family. The concert next Sunday, November 13th, will be at two o'clock and it's sponsored by our social action committee we hope that you'll spread the word and invite a friend to come and hear Connie sing. The concert will be held across the street at the United Church because there's more space there um, for audience and to allow for social distancing for those who would like to have a bigger space. The concert will also be live streamed. Uh, there will be a free will offering which will go directly to help resettle our Ukrainian family and you will also be able to donate online if you're joining us online. The mitten tree is up in the social room, so if you have hats or mittens, gloves, scarves, things that you'd like to donate to help people be warm this winter, we invite you to bring them in to decorate our tree. Also, if you have lightly used jackets or coats, there is a box for that collection as well. So we invite you to bring things to help bring warmth to somebody this year. Once again, we will be putting together 12 Thanksgiving baskets for families in need. We have, as signups.com tells me, 88% of our donations already signed up for. Well done, thank you so much. That means that there's still a few more things, so if you'd like to donate an item, you can click on the signups.com link which we sent out and should be on our website, or you can talk to Debbie Lyon. Where's Debbie? There she is over there at coffee hour. Debbie is happy to help people get signed up if you don't want to have to deal with the online signups. Or if you think of it during the week or if you're with us online, give a call to the office and we'll make sure that you get signed up. We had our first confirmation overnight this last Friday and it was tons of fun. We have a wonderful group of confirmands and mentors um, and it's delightful to be able to go through that process and to be able to meet in person. Tuesday is election day and we encourage you to go out and vote and make your voice heard. We also anticipate that this week, probably Wednesday, will be the last day that our plasterers are here with us. They've been working on the sanctuary for 15 weeks and um, they're just finishing up the stairwells and we're incredibly thankful for all that they've done. You may have noticed a, uh, a drop cloth in the hallway as you came in. That's because the painting has begun, yay! So it's expected to take up to eight weeks, um, but we're, we're at that next stage of the restoration, which is exciting. Our Sacred Conversation on Race resumes this Thursday at 7.30 via Zoom. If you'd like to participate, please let us know. And if you're interested in finding out more about the church and possibly joining our congregation, we invite you to an informal meeting after church next Sunday the 13th. We'll meet in the social rooms and we'll have the moderator and the church historian and members of the Congregational Life Committee. We'll give you a church tour, have you a chance to learn a little bit about the church and to answer any questions that you had. 
will actually be receiving members into membership on December 11th. We are so delighted to have Don and Marilyn DeSmith worshiping with us. It's so great to see you here. Marilyn got the go-ahead from her doctor that her leukemia is, what did it say, 98% the new donor's um, DNA, which is awesome, and it was the first time that he went from an elbow buck to a handshake, which opened the door to our dear friends to be able to be back here. Please don't mob them with handshakes. <laughs> but we are delighted to have you here worshiping with us. I'd like to invite Terry Shipley to come forward and to let you know about something else that has happened. Morning. Morning. I'm uh, very pleased to learn this week uh, from the uh, Landmarks Conservancy that they have awarded us a grant of $10,000 for our project. And uh, they helped us with the, the last big one and to be on their list and have them say yes was wonderful news. Thank you, Terry, and to everybody who worked on the grant proposal. It's a wonderful thing to have received that grant. And now, friends, I invite you to join together in worship. Good morning. I'm the pitch hitter lay reader this morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to this holy place. For many people, home to all who come. Welcome to this gathering place. Friend and stranger, saint and sinner, and all who gather here. Come with hope or hesitation. Come with joy or yearning. All who hunger. All who thirst for life in all its full, in all its fullness, generous God and generous Savior, touch us through your Spirit. Please join us in hymn number thirty-one. I sing the Almighty Power of God.
please join me in the invocation followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy Spirit, truth in this world, you hold us in communion. You dwell within us, continuing to make real the presence of Christ. You make us like a tree replanted by streams of water so that we may bear fruit at just the right time. Though we are many, it is your communion that makes us one body in Christ. Your provision knows no end. For this we give you thanks. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
this is resource month, which means that you hear each week from one of the members of the congregation about what the church means to them and why they give. You'll see in the insert that people have already offered their pledge. So if you're new with us, we're sorry it's during the pledge drive, but hopefully you'll get a sense as to what our church is like and what it means to folks. Um, the children are going to go down with Debbie for Sunday school, but the youth are invited to stay to hear John Schwab, who is our youth group leader. And uh, John, I'd like to invite you to come up and talk to us about resources. Good morning. Uh, I am John Schwab. Um, my wife, Ann Hitchcock, and my, our son, Ian, and daughter, Chloe, uh, we live in Victor. And fortunately, uh, when Ann and I first met, um, Ann and her mother, Gloria Hitchcock, were um, attending church here. And I can tell you that um, the first time that I came into church, I was welcomed with open arms. I, it was really a wonderful thing um, for me personally. Uh, coming from a Roman Catholic background and attending um, grade school and high school uh, through uh, Roman Catholic upbringings. Um, I, I graduated from Aquinas and then went on to U of R. And Ann and I met after college. Uh, Ann graduated from Nazareth. It was really wonderful to um, come into a church and realize there was another church that also had an amazing choir. <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly believe we have the best choir in all of the greater Rochester area. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but m most importantly, uh, what the church uh, really has been for us is um, a solid standing in the community that we could come to and realize that it was the perfect place for us to join our two families together and have everyone come and be very comfortable and celebrate communion uh, during our wedding ceremony. Um, now, Anne's mom, Gloria Hitchcock, was uh, very involved in the church. Um, she was always on church council and sang in the choir uh, and actually insisted that I join the choir as well when I when I first <laughs> when we first um, when I first started coming to church here and that was really wonderful too because I always sang in the choir in high school so that was a nice um, a nice group to contribute with um, I think the the one thing that I want to say uh, that's probably the most important is to talk about the word pledge um, and I'm going to read the definition of the word pledge from Webster's Dictionary definition. Pledge, a solemn promise or undertaking. And so when I read that to myself, um, it kind of struck me that the word solemn was thrown in there. And so I had to work, look up the word solemn. <laughs> And um, solemn is related to uh, anything that is considered dignified. So it, that, I think, is very important to consider um, because, honestly speaking, whenever we have made a pledge to the church during this drive, um, there have been times when I've filled out my pledge card and sent it in, or that we've filled out our pledge card and sent it in, and, Actually, probably more often than not, the 
because of how busy we get, um, I don't actually send it in until the week after they're due. So, but uh, I, I kind of want to focus on that because uh, it is one of the most important things that everyone um, can do as members of the church because it really sets up the church council and all the church organizations to be able to um, plan with a solid like pledge foundation budget. And um, fortunately, Ann and I were asked uh, a while ago to help with the youth group, and part of the youth group is uh, attending the church council meetings, and I have learned an amazing amount of how the church is organized and the committees in the church uh, just being involved with uh, church council meetings and the uh, Christian education um, committee that the youth group is a part of. And it's been uh, an eye-opener because um, I think for me, uh, the most important thing that I could communicate here is just to really try and realize how important that pledge is and making the pledge and actually getting it in uh, is is really important for the budget. And I want to thank everyone because I know um, how all the folks that are, that are members of the church and associate members and folks that attend do an amazing job uh, of getting those pledges in and reali realizing how important it is to um, keep the church going in the community. So thank you very much. Thank you, John. You are an amazing youth group leader as well as council member, and I invite the rest of the youth to go with John because you have youth group happening now. The reading from the Hebrew Bible is from the book of Job. And when I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, what am I in for here? But this is, this is good. It's uh, chapter 19, verses 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my vindicator lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold and not another. My heart faints within me.
invite you to turn in your bulletins to your green litany because coming up this Friday is Veterans Day and we want to give thanks for and acknowledge all of the veterans who are here in this place and those around the world. If you are a veteran, I'd invite you to stand. I know there's some veterans here. <laughs> there we go. All right. Thank you for your service. Would you join with me in our litany for Veterans Day? Loving God, the framers of our Declaration of Independence claimed that you have endowed us with inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yet there are those who would take these from us. Today, we remember all those who have served in our country's armed forces to preserve the freedoms you have granted us, to keep those who would take away our freedoms from prevailing. For the men and women who have served in the Air Force, Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. We ask your blessing. For the family members who have made great sacrifices in order to make it possible for their service members to be on watch at home or around the world. We ask your for the families who grieve the death of a member who went in harm's way never to return. Jesus tells us that no one has greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. For all those veterans who have been willing to lay down their lives for us. For the veterans of past wars who bear scars in their bodies and spirits. For veterans who came home but couldn't fit in with their families or communities anymore. Keep all our veterans in your care today. Grant them peace, the peace that they sought to preserve others. As we honor our veterans, we also pray for peace. Teach all your people the ways of peace that those who have sacrificed so much for peace and freedom will not have done so in vain. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I received a call last night from Karen Noonan, our office manager, that she tested positive for COVID. She said she didn't see almost anybody on Friday, but if you saw Karen, you might want to give yourself a test. Um, she will not be in the office until she is clear, so please expect that there will be times this week when there's no one in the office. If you are able to volunteer a couple of hours from say 10 to 12 one morning this week, we'd really appreciate it. Um, you'd answer phones, let people in the door, manage the food and gas distribution. You can sign up on Karen's door. There's a little thing that says Monday 10 to 12. You put your name next to it and you come. Many of you I know have filled in during the time that Karen was having surgery. So um, we invite you to do that if you are able. And of course it is not Karen alone who is dealing with COVID. We have others in our congregation in, in our world, so we ask you to hold everyone affected by COVID in your prayers. We had two graveside services this weekend. I invite you to hold in your prayers the families of Donna Rouse, Tr Ross Tr Troutman and Margaret June Fisher as they grieve. Continued prayers for Lou K, Jean I, Betsy D, Harry M, Dennis M, and our parishioner's stepson who is home after having his second brain surgery. Would you bow with me in prayer? Creating God, whose silence is louder than all war and whose longing for justice and peace is stronger than any weapon, we meet you here in this place and time of remembrance because that is all that we can do. Creating God who weeps for those who have no time to remember and who enfolds those who have much, we meet you here in this place. You call us beyond silence 
to lives of peace and advocacy. You call us beyond memories and lessons learned to action. Let us do what we have the power to do in order to bring peace to our world, justice, respect, and liberty to all people, not just those in power, but to all people. We remember today those who have served their countries. We thank you for our veterans and we pray that they would know how much their service is honored and appreciated. We pray for those who are in active service right now. Help them to know that though they may be far from home, they are loved and their choice to care for and defend us is so valued. We pray for our veterans who are disabled those who spend their lives in pain. We pray for those who are haunted by memories, those who struggle with mental health issues, and especially today. We pray for those who feel hopeless, and those who have taken their own lives. We pray today for those who have passed from this world to the next, and for all who grieve, we lift especially to you today the families of Donna and June. Holy One, surround all those who are on our prayer request list with healing and comfort. We hold in our hearts today especially Betsy, Dennis, Lou, Harry, Dean, and all those who are recovering from surgery, especially our friends, son recovering from brain surgery. Hear now the prayers that we have come to offer to you from the depths of our hearts in silence. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our gospel reading today comes to us from the book of John, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 14. You'll probably recognize this story. After Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, a large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover festival of the Jews was year, near, and when he looked, he saw a large crowd coming toward him. Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for all of these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he knew what he was going to do. Philip's answered, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. And there was a great deal of grass in that place. So they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. They filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. May God add a special blessing to this reading and hearing of the Holy Word. Would you bow with me in prayer? Almighty God, 
Let now the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. Amen. Leftovers. I used to hate them. They'd get shoved into the back of the refrigerator until they grew fuzzy green sweaters. These days, I am much more excited about leftovers. Leftover night means I don't have to figure out what to cook, and believe it or not, sometimes the meal is better the second time around. There are always leftovers at Thanksgiving, right? In fact, we plan to make too much food so that there will be leftovers. Me, I heat up the turkey and the potatoes and the stuffing, and I'm happy as a clam with Thanksgiving reprise. Jay, is more likely to create something new with the leftovers. He'll get out a tortilla and put on his turkey and stuffing and fill it with cranberry sauce and maybe some cheese and roll it up and heat it up. Voila, a Thanksgiving burrito. (laughs) And those sweet potatoes, they turn very nicely into sweet potato pancakes. The gospel lesson for today as Jesus directing his disciples to gather up the fragments that are left over so that nothing may be lost, so that nothing may be lost. Jesus knows that there is an abundance of blessing that he really doesn't want people to overlook or toss away. Jesus invites us to look at the fragments and to value them to see in the broken pieces something worth saving. Sometimes we feel a little bit like those five loaves of bread being stretched in too many directions and sometimes feeling torn apart. When that happens, it's easy to think of ourselves as broken. What would it mean to each of our lives if we looked at those fragments in a new way? What if those broken pieces were not trash, but a blessing that when gathered together exceeded what we originally had? The feeding of the 5,000 is a story about abundance in the midst of a mindset of scarcity. The disciples look out and they see this huge crowd of 5,000 people and they're completely overwhelmed. Philip sees feeding those multitudes as impossible. Six months' wages would not buy enough for all of these people to eat. What are you asking us to do? Jesus never sees scarcity. He sees a group of hungry people, and he has the faith that they can all be fed. A young boy volunteers those five loaves and two fishes. Have you ever wondered why a young boy would have five loaves of bread? It's probably all the food that he and his extended family had, those five loaves and two fishes. And yet the boy offers it to Jesus. Again, the disciples scoffed, what is that among so many people? We don't have enough. Fortunately, Jesus doesn't listen to his disciples. He teaches them. He shows them that there is abundance even when they are fearful even when they don't believe that there is enough for everyone. And then the miracle happens. Who knows what kind of a miracle it was? Maybe the bread miraculously multiplied each time it was broken. Or maybe the miracle was that each person pulled out the food that they had brought with them and they shared it with the people that didn't have anything. In either case, it's a miracle. It's a miracle and God provides abundance and everyone is fed. And more than that, 12 baskets full of fragments of bread are left over. Do you ever feel like that bread, broken, fragmented, cast aside? What are the things in your lives that tear you apart? Anxiety, depression, pain, fear, Maybe you feel fragmented because you're in the midst of conflict with somebody at home or at work. Maybe your hopes and dreams have been shattered and you find yourself left with only the shards of what had once been the picture of what your life would be. How do we begin to pick up the pieces? 
Are those fragments garbage? Or are they like those bits of bread and fish, which when gathered, bring abundance? Terry Clark writes, quote, perhaps like the bread, you're feeling cast aside or forgotten because your body is failing you and you can no longer contribute in the ways that you used to. Perhaps you feel cast aside or forgotten in your relationships. Friends have left you behind, or perhaps a spouse who is not faithful, children who never call or visit. Perhaps you feel cast aside and forgotten because of who you are, your age, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, race, ethnicity. Hear the good news. Jesus gathers that which has been cast aside and forgotten. Jesus never forgets and never abandons us, never sends us away. Jesus sees you, even when no one else does. He always seeks after the ones who feel lost and forgotten, cast aside, and he lovingly draws us into relationship. This work that Jesus does, gathering us in, is the work of the church as well. Like Jesus instructed the disciples to gather up the fragments so that nothing would be lost, our job too is the work of gathering up. We are the ones who must see the value in the leftovers. We, friends, are Jesus' hands in this world, the ones who gather the outcast or the left behind. We are the ones who are the safety net the ones who catch and gather up the broken, the fragmented, the people who have been tossed aside like scraps. It is an awesome and holy calling to be gatherers. When we see the brokenness in the world, we are called to be the ones who do not turn away, but instead gather up the fragments and begin to build something new. Thanks be to God for leftovers, for abundance of fragments in our world, and for the gatherers who bind us together. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, you are now invited to bring before God your tithes and your offerings for the mission and ministry of this congregation. The offering will now be received. Friends, would you join with me in the prayer of dedication as it's found in your bulletins? For the future glory of your church, we dedicate our gifts. Toward the reign of love in our midst, we consecrate ourselves. O God of all ages, show yourself to us in our time. Work within 
individually and among us as a community of faith, that we may experience resurrection and carry your good news into our world. Amen. Let us join together in our communion hymn 699, Let Us Break Bread Together. Friends, as we gather at this table, know that you are invited to meet the Christ here. As we break this bread and share this cup, you are invited to find within your heart the spirit of Christ that connects all of us together. Friends, would you bow with me in a prayer of consecration? Holy One, bless, bless now this bread and this cup be received by your people. May these fragments fill us with life. Send your spirit so that as we partake, we might feel your presence here among and within us. For we pray in Jesus' name. Friends, I invite you to remember how Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room and how he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you and for all people. This do in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in the name
also how after they had supped our Lord Jesus took the cup and he gave it to his disciples and he said drink ye all of it this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people this do in remembrance of me ministering to you in the name and the presence of Christ we give you this cup blood of Christ, the cup of blessing. Would you bow with me in a prayer of thanksgiving? Holy God, we thank you for blessing us with this holy food. Remind us again of our calling. Send us out into the world to be your hands in the world. Help us to gather in. Make a difference. For we pray <coughs>
invite you to join us for coffee hour following the service. Uh, the worship committee is going to be decorating for Thanksgiving, and we have a couple of people from the worship committee, committee who are out. Um, like Betsy Dresser, who fell and broke her hip. We're thinking of you, Betsy. And uh, if somebody would like to come and join them, I'm sure they could use a few extra hands. And now, friends, go and serve the Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty be and abide with each of you, both this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.